Good morning. Um, I'm going to start a short video this morning. Um, not really a follow-up, but uh, a little different content than the last video. Uh, on the last video we talked about some uh, fly cutters that I had purchased recently. And um, so what I've, I've been experimenting with those and, and I'm quite satisfied with them. They've been working quite nicely. I did order some <clears throat> quarter inch material uh, for to make a tool bit uh, for one of them which I ground for aluminum and um, it's it's doing quite a uh, quite uh, quite nicely uh, quite nice job so I'm pretty happy with it um, I also did some a little research it didn't take much but uh, I did a little research because it really wasn't straightforward to me um, uh, exactly how I needed to grind these tool bits and also um, uh, I tried to gather some speeds and feeds information um, so actually I was able to do that quite easily um, <clears throat> uh, Tom's techniques Tom's Techniques, uh, his website has got a resource center where he's got some information on that and it seemed to be quite good. I looked other places but actually he had the best um, uh, information available and well documented so you know, I was able to take a look at that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little, little test this morning using the uh, hand shaper and um, compare the finish that the um, uh, fly cutter leaves compared to what the hand shaper leaves. And um, just to share that information, um, here's, the, <clears throat> here's the, the fly cutter I used, okay? And you can see, you, you can see the grind on it uh, by looking at the end. And that information I got directly from uh, Tom's uh, website okay and um, <clears throat> he's got a chart um, that um, he's getting on his resource center and it lists the the types of materials and the um, uh, the information you need to come up with the uh, uh, revolutions per minute okay now you know I've been flying by the seat of my pants on this for many years and uh, so that's worked out okay actually um, but it's kind of nice to have something to start with so actually this gives you something to start with um, I think he's if you look on here I'm I'm using 1018 uh, it's like a low carbon steel and he's got that listed over here and um, and then at the top he's got the diameter of the cut and then the RPM that you need to use. So that actually that works out pretty good in reality. Um, I use this for both aluminum and for the uh, for the steel and I think he's got I don't know he's got aluminum on here which would include the 6061 which which I have and um, actually the the flywheel I mean the flywheel the fly cutter leaves quite nice finish um, this is a piece of aluminum that's small enough that that um, this this fly cutter here could uh, uh, make it in one pass. Um, but um, actually, my mill turn it tur as it turns out the um, the tram is quite good. Um, I, I'm not getting any anything at all. Um, uh, I get a line. Uh, but the, but that's about it. I, I can't feel any difference between the two surfaces. So the tram is is pretty good. Um, on the last demo demo, I wasn't locking the Y axis, so that that did make a difference. Um, so anyway, that's that's what it's doing on the aluminum, and I used the same grind um, for these for the steel, and what it is, it's a little steeper angle, but um, what I'm going to do eventually is I'll grind the other end of the tool bit for steel, but this works quite nicely. It probably will dull a little faster because of the steeper uh, angle, but um, it's it works quite nicely. So what I did 
which I'm not going to put on camera, is I um, I took a piece of uh, uh, block of steel and I, I've already run the fly cutter across it. I didn't spend a lot of time, I just ground it and, and rounded the, the uh, point a little bit and um, I made basically one pass on each side of a, a square block of steel. So um, now I'm, I've set that block of steel up on the hand shaper and, um, and I'm going to make a finish cut with the hand shaper and just see what the difference is. Um, so that's, that's where I'm at and so I'm going to reset the camera up uh, here on the shaper so you can, so you can see the cut. And uh, by the way, so if you if you look at um, Tom's website, also he's got he's got a a, 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 um, a, a some information on grinding the tool bit for a fly cutter, so that's good information too. And also, I was able to find not on his website but someplace else because I was looking for. Um, uh, feed information so you know the chip load for a single cutter so I was able to find that for different materials also so I, I've just been using uh, some some chip load that's kinda in between the minimum and maximum somewhere in between so you could experiment with that also you, you can experiment with the RPM but uh, they give you at least gives you a starting point so basically, for the for the aluminum, I was running about a thousand RPM uh, in the last uh, video, and also on the on the uh, 1018 steel, I the RPM was turned down to um, the 300 RPM. I think was what I needed. Anyway, with that, let me uh, let me reset the camera up, and we'll we'll take a look at the cut the shaper makes and see how that compares with the fly cutter. So. So there we go. I moved the camera around, and um, I'm not zoomed in real close right now, but I'll zoom in a little closer later. Uh, I started the cut, um, and what I'll do is I'll um, I'll make this I'll make I'll cut halfway across the block. There's a bunch of indentations in the block of steel, so that's uh, but that's okay. It won't make any difference. You can at least look at the um, the configuration of the cut and the uh, the smoothness of it and then I'll, I'll zoom in later um, in the video and we'll take a closer look at it and probably I'll fast forward through some of this so anyway let's get going and uh, make a few cuts here I'm just using a shear bit that was ground. It seems to be pretty sharp. It's making some decent chips, it looks like. The cup, the cut's a little bit interrupted because of the indentations in the block of steel. So I'm taking a comparable cut to the fly cutter. The fly cutter, I think I took five thousandths. I'm taking about the same with the hand shaper.
Okay, it took a little fooling around, but um, it turned out that the piece I had in there wasn't wasn't square, and it was giving me trouble making a um, sheer cut on it. So um, what I did was, is I surfaced a couple more pieces with the with the fly cutter, and um, they're probably not perfect either because I didn't square up the edges, but I did square up the two faces, or I did parallel the two faces so at least um, I'm getting a pretty clean symmetrical cut across there with the uh, with the hand shaper so anyway I'm gonna I'm gonna show you you can see pretty much what the what the um, you know, fly cutter did it's not it's not wonderful but it is smooth I mean it does feel smooth so hopefully we don't hit any snags here and I'm gonna I'm gonna um, Make a few cuts on there, and then we'll just we'll just try to compare. A little hard to see in the camera, but I can tell you that the um, the hand shaper is is smooth, and the uh, the fly cutter is smooth. It leaves a smooth surface, but you do see the lines in both. So um, let's go ahead and make a few cuts here and see what it looks like. <clears throat> It's also 1018 steel. And the cut is pretty symmetrical. Yeah, little snag there. You can see the chips coming off there. I put a little oil on there, a little cutting oil. This piece of steel feels pretty, like it's cutting pretty smoothly. Let me, uh, let me zoom in just a little bit more. I think it's only been a few, few, few minutes and hasn't been too long. I don't know how much I can zoom in. There's a limit, you know. And also, when you zoom in, the the cut looks way rougher than it really is. But at least you can see the chips coming off. And I'll put a little dab of uh, of cutting oil on there. Turn the viewer around. I put a lot of cutting oil on <laughs> there. Oh well. It's cutting very smoothly. We're taking off about four or five thousandths. Same as I did with the fly cutter. The feed rate is, I think we're, we're feeding at 7,000 per stroke. I can't remember which, don't remember which um, star wheel I have in here. Okay, I think that gives you an idea. Let me, uh, let me zoom out here. Make a couple more strokes.
Okay. Oops. There goes my handle. All right. Um, so let's. Uh, I can't see the viewer too good, but let me just dust it off here. Get rid of the chips. And. Uh, Okay, this will give you an idea anyway. So let me um, take this out of here. Oops. Well, you can see. This is this is this feels this feels just smooth as glass, and this the fly cutter doesn't feel quite as smooth. It is a nice smooth cut. You can see the crosshatch in it, so it's um, it looks like a nice cut, but the shaper definitely gives you a better surface. And uh, the thing is, is this piece when you put it in the shaper. <laughs> Both sides got to be parallel. It's got to be square uh, to make a shear cut. Otherwise, uh, you'll dig in. So um, that was my problem initially. So that gives you an idea of the difference between the fly cutter and the shaper. Um, pretty nice cut, actually. Simple old piece of of uh, 1018. You can see the edges. Pretty rough looking. Okay, I'll call off. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Okay. Bye bye.